Hey guys, I'm Bryce and this is Aaron again and we're here with another update to Fusion 360. Yeah, this is a big one. Uh, there's a lot of new import capabilities. Those SOLIDWORKS 2016 files are going to come in, Inventor 2017, NX10, and Katia V5. Wow, it's a ton of different file types. Yeah. And then I'm going to show you right off the bat some productivity enhancements. Right off the bat, look in the bottom right corner when you select an edge or a face. We have a dynamic measurement tool right at the bottom. One of my favorite enhancements coming up. Nice. Let's check it out. We will start off this update by highlighting one of the highest voted requests in the idea station from TMC Engineering. Now in Fusion 360, when geometry is selected, a measurement will be displayed in the bottom right corner automatically. This measurement will change depending on the type of geometry that is selected. To name a few measurements, a linear edge will display a length, an arc or circular edge will display a radius, two non-planar faces will display an angle, and two parallel faces will present a distance. The measure tool has also been enhanced. Previously, it was difficult to snap to different points of an arc or circle. Now various points of interest are presented where you can snap to for different measurements. When hovering over a face, you can hold the command key for Mac or control key for Windows. The snap points will remain highlighted to select snap points that are hidden. This behavior is similar to creating joints when assembling components. This next enhancement is one of my favorites. When using variables, previously you would have to type the entire variable name. Now when you start typing a variable in any dialog, Fusion 360 will display a list to autocomplete the variable name. This will work for sketch dimensions, feature dimensions, and this even works when you're creating other parameters in the edit parameter dialog window. In this example, I was able to apply a parameter to control the length of the pattern of these holes. Of course, if I updated the parameter, it would update the length of this pattern. Another awesome enhancement that will enable faster sketching is the ability to add multiple equal relationships at the same time. In this example, I'm able to select multiple circles and make them all equal in one command. Finally, earlier this year we added the ability to pattern components with the rectangular pattern, circular pattern, or pattern along path command. In this update we have added the ability to mirror components. This is great when you need to produce the left and right hand versions of a component. This feature is parametric so features that happen before the mirror feature will appear in the mirrored component. Now don't spend time creating an opposite hand version, just use the mirrored component command. Well, that's some great stuff, man. The ability to add multiple equal constraints at the same time is a huge time saver. And then also the ability to mirror components. I think that's something that a lot of people were looking for. Yeah, and all of those were actually on the idea station. So go ahead and check the idea station out. Vote for your own. Make your own up if you have a great idea, and we'll implement it in the next update. But we're going to see something else. What are we going to check out now, Aaron? We're going to see drawings, updates to drawings, and also in rendering, we have some awesome new capabilities in there. So let's take a look. While not necessarily an update for May 7th, we thought this first detail was worth noting. When you access your preferences, you'll see some unique options specific to the rendering workspace. This will enable you to define defaults related to environment, background, ground plane visibility, and more. This can help you ensure a consistent display over numerous rendering iterations and designs. Once in the rendering environment, you'll find a new button. The In Canvas button will do what the Render button used to do. Rapid ray trace rendering in the canvas. This can generate some amazing images, but any scene change or accidental mouse movements can cause the ray tracing to start again from the beginning. To avoid restarts and open up larger renders going forward, let's see what the render button now does for us. When I click it, you'll see the ability to do a local render in addition to cloud rendering. What this means is that once your scene is set and presets and options defined, once you click render, you can continue work on other things and rotate freely. What's more is that if you access the advanced settings, you can go well beyond your screen's resolution and up to 4,000 by 4,000 pixels. Drawings have a number of updates to report, starting with thread display. After updating, you can see the threads disappear because I've chosen not to model it in the latest iteration to cut down on resource usage. Now in drawings, we can still choose to show the cosmetic threads by accessing the view properties. With this turned on, it will show cosmetic thread displays per the drawing standards. Whether it's ISO, ASME, or fully modeled, it's now up to you. Let's jump over to another drawing to see some other enhancements. 
The first comes from an idea station request, which had to do with surface finish callouts. This provides us with all the required inputs from type, requirements, and directions. Another update is the newly added ability to hide and show the title block and border. And the real beauty here is the ability to bring them back. And going forward, when you add notes, you'll be provided with a text property box to help drive things like the typeface, size, and font. The last thing I want to show has to do with inserting SVGs. I want to add a part number to the base of our robot arm. Now when you go to put your logos and complex text into your designs, you're provided with a preview. So when your SVG comes in upside down, a quarter of the size and off center, you can rotate, scale, and translate until it's just right. Cool, well I know that SVG import preview is gonna help a lot of people. It certainly has helped me already. What do you got? Yeah, that's one of my favorites by the way. But we also did some updating on the back end. Files are gonna upload and translate faster. When you move a copy of them, it's gonna be faster. It was a major update for us on the back end. Yeah, and as I understand it, it's gonna open up some powerful new capabilities for us in the future. Yeah, a ton of them. We'll see some great nuggets coming down. But thanks guys for watching. Leave us a comment and we'll see you next time. Cheers.